Okay, begin whenever you are interested. Okay, um, great. All right, thank you again for the, the invitation. Um, so I'm going to talk a bit about um, um, stabilizer rank method, well, particularly one stabilizer rank method. Um, so this this comes from um, a paper that I worked on um, during my PhD. So this was um, joint work with, um, I get everyone, um, Bartosz Regula, uh, Hakko Pashai, and uh, Yinkai Uyang, and Earl Campbell. So uh, mostly I'm going to be um, talking about material. Um, I think it went out in the in the email, but um, it's from this this paper. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> this paper's actually got, um, it's got a sort of three different algorithms in it, um, and each is related to a, a, a monotone, so a sort of a measure of magic, um, and it's in the qubit setting. So everything I'm going to talk about today is, is, is just for the, um, for the multi-qubit setting. Uh, and, um, <clears throat> the, the particular, um, the particular algorithm I'm going to focus on is um, is kind of a descendant of um, there was a a paper by um, Bravi Brown Kelpin Campbell Gossett and Howard. Mm -hmm. uh, so this was I think it's called something sim simulations of um, using low you know, low rank stabilizer. Uh, decompositions, I think. Um, yeah, so the archive for this one is this, <clears throat> and uh, these were generally these were really methods for um, pure states um, where they they introduced the the stabilizer extent and a method of sparsification. Um, but I'll, I'll sort of get into the details of that. Um, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I guess, um, just to, to outline what I'm going to talk about, um, so I'll just, um, I'll kind of define what, 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 what we mean by stabilizer rank, the extent. So this, um, there's a pure state version, which is, um, I, I, I think, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of use this for this paper to refer back to this paper. So that there's a pure state version which was defined um, for that paper. And then in our paper, we extend this to mixed states or rather to density operators so that it can be used for mixed states and show you how you can um, sort of extend the associated algorithm. Um, <clears throat> And yeah, so then I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sort of outline the algorithm. Um, and then I show how you can sort of, so the, the, the algorithm um, that's sort of presented in the paper is um, the setting where you sort of have, um, I'll talk about the settings a bit more in a, in a moment, but it's, um, you, you sort of have stabilizer circuits with um with magic state inputs um but you can extend this to to sort of uh slightly more more general channel channels um it's a bit of a restriction for this particular type of um simulator um and i'll give some uh, just a, one or two examples of how you would do this for um particular noisy non-stabilizer channels. Um, so I think this is this is this is kind of this will probably take up most of the most of the time. We'll see how it goes. Um, but um, if there's time, I'll maybe also talk about some uh, other monotones and simulators. Um, so in particular, there's something called the 
dyadic frame, um, which is a sort of um, <clears throat> evolution of, um, I think, so I think Mark Howard might have talked about robustness of magic, this mm -hmm. kind of thing. So this is a, a sort of an evolution of that type of simulation. Um, and um, talk about some connections between the monotones. And so you sort of had in you know, you know in in up up to the point of us sort of writing this paper, there'd been these sort of these kind of two strands of of um, stabilizer simulation methods broadly. So there'd been sort of stabilizer rank type simulators, which were kind of based around pure states, um, and quasi probability methods, which were more suitable for uh, density matrices. Um, but one of the things we do in, in this paper is, is show that sort of via these monotones, there is a kind of formal connection between these two things. Um, okay, so I think I can uh, move on to getting a bit more concrete. So, um, <clears throat> so what is stabilizer rank? Um, so uh, it's it's kind of fairly straightforward. So the idea is for any for any uh, pure state, we can always write this down as some um, superposition of stabilized states. So this is this is kind of trivially true because we can always um, you know for example write something down in a computational basis. Um, but there are many different um, stabilizer bases and there are, um, there are many different ways of, of writing this down. Um, so the stabilizer rank is um, the um, the number of terms, the sort of minimized number of terms over all, all these, sorry. Over all these, these types of decomposition. Um, okay, so um, <clears throat> this, I mean, this this kind of already um, sim sim suggests some sort of a naive simulation method where you just sort of um, simulate every every um, uh, every branch of the superposition in, in turn. Um, but stabilizer rank can be um, it can be quite large for for um, uh, many qubit states. So this um, motivates um, the notion of approximate stabilizer rank. And here the idea is that um, suppose we allow some error in the um, decomposition. So we kind of minimize over all approximate decompositions. <clears throat> so it seems like the, this is maybe uh, not easy to, um, to to kind of optimize over, um, but in this um, in this paper by um, Bravi et al, so BBCCGH, um, they introduced this quantity called the, I'm going to call it pure state, they call it stabilizer extent, but I'm going to call it pure state extent. What this is, is um, <clears throat> So this is this thing is that is an L one norm. So if we take a vector of of coefficients, and the idea is that you minimize over um, 
possible, sorry. You minimize over decom decompositions, but now you're not trying to find the one with the smallest number of terms. You're trying to minimize this, this norm, and this you can do using convex optimization techniques. So it's that's going to be hard in general for um, a large um, number of qubits because um, although uh, a, a linear program is um, uh, it, it's efficient in the problem size, the problem size is going to grow super exponentially because the, the, the number of stabilizer states grow super exponentially. But it turns out that for um, some important cases, this, this quantity is multiplicative. So if you're interested in, for example, something like many copies of a T state, then you only need to know the extent for the T state. And then um, you, you or rather you, you only need to know a sort of the optimal decomposition for the T state. And that sort of automatically gives you a, um, an optimal decomposition for um, the, the many copy state. Um, and um, this is true uh, on for pure states up to up to three qubits. It's known to be true. Uh, it's maybe also just while we're defining this, it's it maybe also worth noting there's a there's a dual form for this one, um, which is a kind of maximization over witnesses. So over all objects that um, satisfy this, this kind of witness inequality for um, stabilizer states, if you maximize over all of these, then you, then you, um, <coughs> Uh, you get the extent. Um, and this is useful because this is it's useful for proving optimality. So um, say you've got a, um, a decomposition that you think might be optical, optimal. You can then um, take, uh, if you can find a witness that gives you um, this being equal to your, um, your L1 norm squared, then um, then you know that you found an optimal decomposition. Okay, so that was in this previous work. Um, uh, are there any questions so far? No. Oh, okay. So um, <clears throat> so one of the things we do in this um, in this paper is it's um, it's a pretty straightforward extension. There's a kind of quite natural extension to this. Um, uh, to the extent, which we call uh, mixed state extent or maybe density operator extent. And this is um, what's called a convex roof extension. So given a density operator, then this is going to be a minimum of, you can think of it as the minimum average pure state extent. So given all um, all convex mixtures of, of, of pure states, um, it's um, it's a decomposition with the the, the sort of minimal average average extent, um, <clears throat> and it's it's kind of quite clear that this this. Um, in the case of pure states, this is going to be equal to the pure state extent because then there's no, if you've got a pure state, there's no ambiguity of what 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 kind of decomposition you have here, possible decompositions. Um, these are um, in general, this this kind of quantity is quite is is difficult to compute. Um, however. Um, in um, the paper, um, one of the results is that um, um, there are, for, for, for single cube,
decomposition. And this means that, um, oh, sorry. Uh, basically, it means that the extent is uh, is the same for all for all the land, uh, uh, for all the elements in the decomposition. And this this will um, maybe later this will become um, clear why this this is kind of nice for simulation. Um, okay, uh, something to say here. Uh, so do you mean for some decomposition or for every decomposition? I mean, sorry. Uh, so uh, oh. this this condition for some decomposition of row or for every decomposition of row. So for every um, every single every single qubit um, uh, density matrix, there exists an optimal equimagical decomposition. If that's is that what you're asking? And you can so find. I, I think I was asking about the definition of eco magical. Uh, yeah. Equimagical. Yes. Yes. Sorry. For uh, yeah. So for all for all elements. Uh, but, but, but but the decomposition that you are fixing for rho. Uh, yeah. So is is it for a fixed or for every? Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. Um, there. Uh, there exists a decomposition that has this property, um, okay. but there could well be other decompositions where that's not true. Okay, mm. okay, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Um, okay, so I think uh, I'll go on to talk about algorithms a bit. Um, so, what's the setting? So, in the, in the BBCCGH, um, uh paper um so one one of the one of the kind of variants of the algorithm they talk about is um, a bit string um a kind of bit string sampler so the idea is that you've got some um circuit where you've got um zero state on a number of on a number of qubits and maybe you've got you've got some sort of magic state input And then you've got a Clifford circuit. And then you want to you, you want to kind of sample bit strings on some um, some subset of the of the qubits. Um, <clears throat> and they also talk about in that paper how you can you can um, sort of lift this type of um, uh, these kind of extent decompositions of of states to um, to gates, so you can do a similar similar kinds of um, simulation using um, a sort of non Clifford circuit. If you've got a a decomposition of the circuit where you have um, kind of local non Clifford gates, and then you can do bit bit string sampling again. Um, so in our paper. We talked about um, uh, kind of relaxing this so you can have um, um, noisy uh, input states, really. Um, <clears throat> when I talk about the algorithm, I'm going to sort of simplify this a bit so we don't, we sort of don't worry about the circuit because we can, um, as long as it's a stabilizer circuit, we can we can kind of that's that that's kind of easy. So we can we can kind of forget about that part. And the the, the interesting part is how we we sample from these non-stabilizer states. Um, <clears throat> sorry, so I should say the, these are meant to be magic, and these are stabilizer. Um, and then I think um, so. I, I, this wasn't in the paper, but um, I, it, um, my, oh, sorry, my thesis. I um, talk about how you can extend this to channels, um, specifically to um, unit or local channels. Um, there are some difficulties in um, 
I think it's not clear if you have non-mutual channels how you would do this particular type of algorithm, but there, there are other other classical simulation algorithms that can deal with that. Um, okay. Um, so I'm going to I'm just going to go in and sort of sketch how this algorithm, um, how that proceeds. Um, okay, so um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of forget about the circuit and assume that the the, the task that you want to the, the simulation task is that you're given a uh, a mixed state, which is some convex mixture of of um, possibly non-stabilizer states, um, and the idea is that you want to uh, draw a bit string from the distribution, the kind of the quantum dif distribution, if you like. So you have some um, uh, bit string X, and you want to sample this from your, your mixed state. Um, <clears throat> So intuitive, intuitively enough, the, um, the first step is to just uh, sample from, from this with probability EJ. Um, <clears throat> so this is, this is a kind of, you know, a fairly obvious extension to the VBCH. Um, <clears throat> simulator, um, and so you've uh, going into the next step. You have this um, um, pure state. So I should have said um, we also assume that for for each of these we have a known decomposition. Hmm. That's terms of stabilizer states. Um, <clears throat> and then um, the next step is a call to what we call a sparsify subroutine. So again, this comes from the, the um, BBCCGH paper. So what this does is it um, it takes in this, this description of, of of psi j in terms of stabilizer states, and it gives you a um, a sparsified approximate approximation. So um, the hope is that the the stabilizer rank of this approximation is much um, smaller. Next step is um, <clears throat> um, you basically what you do now is you you sample um, bit bitwise from um, from this using this specified state, um, and this involves calls to uh, a fast a fast norm estimation subroutine. So again, this comes from BBCC GH paper. Mm. And what this does is it will estimate for you um, So in the first step, for example, you estimate sorry, this should be the Omega. You want to estimate this and you need to normalize it because um, <clears throat> in general this omega is not necessarily normalized and then in, um, so this would give this would give you the probability of, of of something zero or one in the first step and then you just randomly choose that based on the probability that you get and then um, so if you have um, so let's say it's a, a length w String that you want to sample, you do this um, w minus one more times, 
and each in each step you're estimating um so i guess the the notation i can use i'm going to use here is that um you um in the algorithm suppose that you have this um this this bit string and in the first step um it's going to be um whatever you sample for x naught and then each step you sort of concatenate um <clears throat> a um Sorry, this is, this is a bit of an abusive notation, but the idea is that each step you each step you add another you add another bit. Mm. So the idea is that you have um, these these kind of conditional probabilities. So suppose you sampled zero in the first step. Okay. Uh, sorry, it should be next. Yeah, no, that's right. So th th this is this is like the probability of sampling zero in the second step given um the whatever bit you sampled uh in the um <clears throat> in the previous steps um and that's that's pretty much it that's the algorithm so the kind of um and and you you then output at the end you output this string um <clears throat> so the the kind of the um the, the the technical part is is um what goes into this what goes into this classification um and um what goes into the fast norm estimation and how you can show that um you can sort of control the errors in these steps because this is fast norm estimation this is um um uh it's it, it's again there's some error which um <clears throat> you, you uh at the cost of incurring some error you can you can estimate this sort of faster than than um naively um, I'll, I'll come back to what i mean by that um yeah so in a, in a moment I'll, I'll talk a bit about what what actually happens in the sparsification step and um what um what i mean by fast norm estimation um any any questions at this point no uh, sorry this sparsification step what was what was it happening there could you just remind that again so yeah so you have you you're you assume that you you know this exact decomposition here now you could you could just get you could just skip this step, you could skip the specification, and go straight to here. Um, <clears throat> but the point of the specification is it 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 come it it connects into the 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 stabilized extent I talked about before, um, and the idea is that um, this could have if you've got a many qubit state, um, this this could have a very large number of of terms. And so you want to sort of squeeze that down a bit. So at the cost of um, introducing an approximation, you um, hopefully reduce the um, the kind of stabilizer rank of, of the, the the vector that you're actually computing with by quite a lot. Okay. But I'll I'll, I'll, say, I'll I'll show exactly what what happens in sparsification. Okay. Okay. So here we have the input. Um, we have some. Um, known decomposition in terms of stabilizer states. And we're going to output a um, an approximation to this, and um, 
So one of the one of the kind of we sort of in this in in our paper we don't really change the algorithm much, but we given a sort of improved um, um, uh, sort of error bound that's um, that's kind of more appropriate to um, as as well as being an improved bound, it's it's, it's sort of more appropriate to um, uh, the kind of density matrix picture. So um, in the original BBCH paper, the guarantee was that on average, you have um, you have this guarantee. Yeah, so I should say as well as the there's, there's kind of two inputs to sparsification. There's your your um, um, your decomposition, your known exact decomposition, and also the number of terms you would like to have. And the um, <clears throat> the point is that if you look at this expression, by increasing the number of terms, you can um, you can reduce the error. Um, and so, uh, you know, at some point you will hit the the um, uh, the, the kind of the, the actual stabilizer rank of this of, of the state, but you can actually um, you, you can kind of do a lot better in terms of the number of terms. So you can get a pretty small error. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and um, yeah, so that was the original um, the original sort of promise about the um um the kind of closeness and there are a couple of other um um uh statements about that in the, the, the that previous paper um but then what we showed is that um if you think it instead so th this this kind of tells you on average what's the what, what's this difference um but suppose you instead think about as um an ensemble of of um, specifications. And I'll show how this, where this kind of probability comes from, because this is, it's a, it's a, a kind of randomized algorithm. So um, <clears throat> you, you, you take this input state and with some probability, you get one of these, um, these kind of specifications. Um, and so you can think of this as an ensemble of, of pure states. And uh, what we showed is that you can, um, you basically to uh, kind of to leading order. Oh, sorry, I keep putting the one in the wrong place. There you go. you have this this kind of relation um, <clears throat> um and you can kind of convert um the, the this sort of guarantee into one of this form um and it and it sort of um it would give you um it, you kind of get a it, it, in our version you kind of get a quadratic improvement in the in the, this error bound um so i should say this is the traditional Okay, so I, I'll just I'll, I'll just go over what the what this subroutine actually does. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to select with um, probability um, We're going to select some pure some pure states of the form pure stabilizer states. This form, so they're all they're all normalized. Sorry, they're all normalized. Um, <clears throat> and you select this with probability. 
this probability. Hmm. And then your omega, you do this k times, and your omega is um, thing. So sorry, I should say I should write this like this. So for each alpha, for each term in this, in this. In this decomposition, this this is the probability that you choose the the jth term of the exact decomposition. Hmm. Um, okay, so the yeah, so the point is that you can choose whatever um, whatever k you want. In reality, what you want to do is you um, you you choose your precision. You choose the precision that you want. And then you choose K so it's large enough to, to sort of control the error. Hmm. Okay. Um. <clears throat> uh, so that your bound, the bound that you guys have is not an expectation, right? It's. Yeah, that's right. It's, it, it's, um, <clears throat> it's, well, it's for this ensemble. Mm -hmm. uh, but the rationale is kind of, is like um, in, in um, the algorithm I, de I described is um, so. There's one of these ensembles for every um, every one of the pure states that's sampled from the original decomposition. So basically, you have, if you recall, you're you're starting off from mm -hmm. something like this. And for every one of these, there is an ensemble of the form above. So um, the, the kind of the first part of our algorithm is, is, is basically like sampling from, um, uh, let's call it O prime, It's sampling from this ensemble. Mm. The argue you can then um, <clears throat> use this bound on the, the trace norm um, to 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 get a bound on 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 this. Mm. Okay. So the, the 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 kind of the measurement statistics for um, um, for this ensemble should be close to sorry for this ensemble should be close to the, that for the, for this one let me see okay um <clears throat> um there are there are some kind of caveats with this um <clears throat> um i maybe won't go into the details and i can Come back to it later if there's time, but um, you, uh, there's like a sort of um, a critical precision um, above which um, um, this is this is kind of what dominates the error. Um, below that precision, um, you have you end up with the, the the same the same kind of asymptotic scaling as the BBCCH, but the the con the constants. Uh, tend to be very much smaller. So it's still, it, it's kind of always gives you a, a, a better bound in practice, even if the sort of the scaling looks the same, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> uh, okay, so yeah, if I now just sort of describe the idea with with, with fast norm. So here, this fast the fast norm estimation. This is purely from BBC CGH. So we didn't um, we didn't um, sort of improve on this in, in the paper. But the idea is that um, you're given um, you're given a sort of un unnormalized state, and you want to estimate. Um, and for example, an unnormalized state can come from a projector applied to um, a 
this, this sort of sparse segregation, which so this was uh, probably over normalized to begin with, and then you have some projection as well. So the whole the whole kind of game is to understand is to know what the norm is. So we we want to know these norms. So basically, given some unnormalized um, uh, superposition, we want to estimate this. <clears throat> so now, if you've got um, this kind of decomposition, so say you've got chi terms in this, mm -hmm. naively, what you might do is um, just take the um, the inner product, but um, if you do this, you're going to have um, you're going to have uh, sort of chi squared terms, right? So there's this um, chi squared um, stabilizer inner products that you have to evaluate and um, chi is probably, if, 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 you're, if you're doing something with many qubits, it's probably already pretty large. So you, you want to avoid that if possible. Um, the idea with um, <clears throat> um, fast norm is that you um, uh, define this random variable. And you, um, you essentially sample random stabilizer states and then find the inner product. So here you sort of you cut out one of one of these these chi's. And um, this um, in expectation um, gives you the if you, if you if you do this many times on average, this gives you the um, uh, the um, a multiplicative error estimate for the um, sorry for the for the norm. Um, and I should say these are these, here. These are these are called equatorial in the in the BBCH paper. They're called equatorial stabilizer states. So they have a particular form. Um, the original form of this kind of norm estimation was um, due to uh, Bravi and Gossett, and there in that in their sort of original version, they um, they just sample uniformly from the stabilizer states, and they use the two des two design property. Um, <clears throat> um, but this 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 kind of um, follow up paper BBCCGH they um, they show that you can just use these equatorial states. So I didn't say what A is. A is um, these are n by n symmetric matrices. With um, <clears throat> You have these values on the diagonal and zero one off off diagonal. So essentially, these are all the um, the, the equatorial. The, the word equatorial comes from the, the sort of analogy with the single qubit case, where you have the equator of, of the block sphere, where you, where the um, the stabilizer states there are equal um, superpositions of zero and one. Mm -hmm. So this kind of goes over all bit strings. Um, um, okay, so I think, um, yeah, um, that's all I'll say about fast norm. Um, so the idea is just that it gives you, um, what it gives you is an, um, an estimate, um, let's call it at a, So this, uh, uh, this, is, this is not the same as this one. This is just one of these, but you have to do it many times. 
and then um, <clears throat> average, and then and then do that several times again, and take a median of means. Mm. But what what this gives you is um, in the end is a, a multiplicative error estimate um, for the norm. And for bit string sampling, it's important that it's multiplicative error so that you're, you don't start amplifying errors as you um, um, some if, when you do this kind of many times. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so um, maybe I'll just sort of, uh, is, uh, if I go back to the, just go back to the um, algorithm. Are there are there any point any uh, questions at, at this point? I think I'm okay. Um, yeah. The one thing I should have said maybe about fast norm is that I I I, I guess I kind of implied this, but the point is that the runtime is going to be. Um, it's going to go with the number of terms in the decomposition. Okay. And um, inverse quadratically with the um, error, the multiplic multiplicative error. Um, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, cubic with the number of cubes. Okay. Um, yeah, so if I go back to Sorry, the important thing is the run time. Here we go. Sorry. Sorry about that. So um yeah, so the the um The runtime for this whole this whole algorithm is in 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 general you have a you you have an average case runtime because um, if you we're, we're going from this decomposition in in principle each of these psi could have um, a different um, uh, number of terms sorry a different stabilizer extent. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Um, yeah, maybe this is something I didn't emphasize when we were talking about sparsify. So um, the, it, it's this L1, this L1 norm that ultimately gives, um, tells you how, for a given precision, how many terms are you going to need? And mm -hmm. of course, the, the, the stabilized extent tells you the minimal one norm. So this is the point. You want to find the decomposition with the, the minimal of this L1 norm. Mm -hmm. And this gives you... Um, um, <clears throat> um, that, that sort of reduces the number of, of terms you need for a given precision. I see. So the average um, runtime goes like this. This kind of um, xi with the tilde is meant to be <clears throat> this is the actual sort of average extent of, um, not even average extent, but the average L, L1 norm squared, if you like. So this is the real cost of this thing. But in the optimal case, you, you'd want this to be the, the mixed state extent. Nice. Um, so the point is it goes, um, if you're above this critical precision, It's like like this. Sorry, can you remind me what is that omega or w? Sorry. Sorry, this is sorry, this is meant to be a w. This is the length of the bit string. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the reason it's not just linear is because you sort of need to control um it, it's like okay, you have to sample this many bits. Mm -hmm. 
but you also the the more bits you sample the more you have to control the the error because you you um so that you you, you sort of a, for the whole album you achieve this sort of fixed um um error in the in the kind of outcome distribution so that's meant that's what this delta is meant to be but this has this has um contributions from the sparsification error and mm -hmm. from the fast norm error okay and you need to make these small enough um so that you you, you sort of take into account that you've got to do this a number of times and this is the probability of failure so to log logarithm logarithmically de depends on the inverse of that probability so you can effectively you can make the probability of failure as small as you like hmm. um, <clears throat> um, then if, but if you want if you do want ab, um, arbitrary precision um, the actual form looks like this Um, so, hmm. so it's the same, but it, you have this additional term. Um, but this is this this is this d is is um, it's state dependent, but it's often very small, and for some um, it can be zero. Mm -hmm. um, it's zero. I think it's zero in the case of of, of um, t states, for example. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so all right, so that was the that was the algorithm for this case where um, essentially this, but sort of forgetting about the Clifford circuit. Um, <clears throat> I go this way. So. Um, you can also you can lift this to you can lift um, stabilizer extent to decompositions of unitaries. So we can define um, a unitary extent as the minimal minimal. Uh, decomposition over Clifford Gates. Um, <clears throat> and you can make a link for, um, so for diagonal Cliffords, sorry, for di not diagonal Cliffords, diagonal Gates, you can, you can sort of make a link the resource state mm. and in the BBC CCGH paper um, <clears throat> they have what they call the, the lifting lemma um, so if we let you be the resource state for you where this is diagonal with um this decomposition over again equatorial stabilizer states And the decomposition of this Clifford decomposition um, has unitary extent less than or equal to um, the L1 norm squared of, of this state decomposition. 
and then in the case when um, in the case when this is the optimal decomposition, then it's also true that it's the optimal unitary extent. <clears throat> So this sort of tells you if you um, so if you imagine imagine that you have a circuit where you've got um, you kind of have if the d are if if the d are Clifford gates and the u are non Clifford gates um, <clears throat> then. Um, if you're making some sort of projective measurement at the end of the circuit, then um, effectively what you're doing is you've got um, uh, you're letting you, you let these act on some initial state, and then um, <clears throat> so your your sort of final state is is uh, this. And then you can um, use um, decompositions of this type to rewrite this as um, I use J as a sort of um, as a vector. Mm -hmm. Then um, <clears throat> you can kind of fold together all of these. Uh, you can fold it all together as a sum over Clifford circuits, and you can use the same the same techniques that I've already talked about. So sparsification, mm. and your you, you you can kind of uh, there's this sort of correspondence between um, pure state decompositions um, of equatorial sorry um, pure state decompositions in terms of equatorial states and these um, Decom Clifford decompositions of um, diagonal unitaries. Um, <clears throat> so that was that was how they talked about. You can use they call it sum over Clifford, um, obvious obvious reasons. Um, <clears throat> and then so the other setting I talked about was this one where um, instead of having um, uh, a nice unitary circuit, maybe you're interested in simulating um, a noisy circuit. Um, and um, there's you, you can extend, um, you can sort of naturally extend the, the um, mixed state extent to a sort of, um, you, you might call it a unitary channel extent. So um, supposing that you have a channel that you can write as um, a convex mixture of unitary channels, um, then you can minimize, uh, in principle, minimize over all of these. Of course, this is hard to do in general. <coughs> this is the kind of, this is the rationale. Um, <coughs> And then you look for the minimal um, uh, average unitary extent. Um, so th this is difficult in general, um, but um, there is, for some cases you can come up with um, an, an analytic um, solution that um, turns out to be optimal. Um, <clears throat> so maybe I'll just um, I, I don't have a lot of examples for this, but um, there's there's one um, uh, that's kind of maybe sort of relevant in, in for a sort of realistic setting is where mm -hmm. if you have um, a uh, dephased a dephased Z rotation. Let's move to some new space.
Um, so by this I mean you model the noise as um, dephasing mm -hmm. following a um, uh, sing uh, this is a single qubit rotation. Mm -hmm. uh, is the idea, but the, um, the idea is you, if you've got a circuit decomposition where you've got sort of maybe mainly Clifford gates, but then in some places you have um, these single qubit Z rotations, but they they're subject to dephasing. Um, and um, so if I write this as so this this is meant to be a channel version mm -hmm. of the of of the gate. And to be precise by this, this, this is what I mean. <clears throat> so as I just talked about, you can, you can, um, you can, um, you can kind of map these between, um, uh, you can map these back to single qubit um, states that are in the equator of, of the block sphere so we can kind of use the same techniques to, to sort of go back and forth so um and you can you can also do this for diagonal channels so given um a channel of of the um this form i can i can um kind of use this so this is sort of like a stand-in for the choice state um mm -hmm. if, we, if we restrict to diagonal channels and and then you can use some of the intuition about the single qubit states. So if we take the equator of the, the, the block sphere, and so this here, we've got um, a slice to the stabilizer um, polytope. And then for each of these rotations, um, we can identify a um, a point. For rotations, we can uh, identify a point on the on the on the on the surface on the equator. Okay. <laughs> now, um, yeah. So if I write this, if I write out this. Um, this channel, um, what you get is um, some probability that you get the um, intended rotation and some probability you get it um, kind of flipped around. Mm -hmm. So then the, the, um, the state is over here. Uh, that should be pi radians, this, this, this convention. Yeah, so if you, you have this noisy state that's kind of somewhere along this line, and the intuition is then that, um, okay, well, you can see this is already, you could, you could just feed this into the, um, into the kind of algorithm I talked about, yeah. but here you're, you, you're, you're sort of, the extent of these is just of each of these is the same as the as the ideal channel. But actually, when there's noise, you can use the noise to make it easier to simulate. So um, here's another here's another decomposition. So for some angle, you have um, you have some theta, and then I have uh, two minus theta. So then you can equate hmm. and and then you can you, you can see that. This is going to be um, uh, it's um, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's 
obvious, but intuitively it makes sense that this should this is a smaller rotation, so it should have a smaller extent than 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 this one, right? Mm -hmm. And because it, you, you because um, there's this symmetry here, these two are going to have the, the the same extent. So this is an equimagical decomposition. Mm -hmm. um, I think oh, I didn't. I think I didn't. When I was talking about the algorithm, I didn't mention why why equimagical decompositions are are nice for for, for this um, this simulator. Um, the point is that I mentioned that I, I I was talking about the average case runtime because these can have different um, uh, um, you can have different extent for different elements in the decomposition. When it's equimagical, they have the same extent, so then it's it's the worst case runtime. So you you know that for if you just do one bit string, there's no chance that you're going to choose poorly and have a, one with much larger extent than all the others. Um, okay, so uh, <clears throat> I think yeah, so I think I've 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 just about covered yeah. As I said, this was kind of the the, the main part I wanted to talk about. Um, so maybe. Um, if there are any questions now, I can answer them, or I can um, I can um, talk a bit about some of the other monotones briefly. Um, I think that you. I, I guess I just had a, a small question. Is there some you had this sort of uh, the smaller the angle and then the the smaller the extent? Is that something that is? What are the conditions? Is that just true for like a single cubic case, or uh, can you generally sort of think of like the smaller the distance under some norm and then uh, yeah. relative to some stabilizer means a smaller extent or yeah yeah uh, yeah so for for the single cubic case like it's very clear and you can have yeah. uh, there's like an analytic expression for it at least at least for these um um these sort of rotations about Pauli axes yeah um, if you look at sort of robustness monotones then it's kind of it, it, it's quite clear that they they sort of look they're essentially a distance from a stabilizer polytope. Uh -huh. um, I think uh, I think it should be true. I'm not sure I can say anything um, concretely about it. Um, okay. um, it should be the case that. Um, um, You know, if you if you imagine like you've got the stabilizer polytope and the extreme points are um, just thinking about um, pure state, pure um, mm -hmm. pure state extent. If you think about them being extreme points as um, on the the kind of boundary of the of the of the uh, set of density matrices. Um, Intuitive, intuitively, I think it must be true that you, as you, as you sort of, if you if you take one of these rotations, as you increase it, it, it increases the extent. Um, yeah, but I'm not sure I can say anymore. Okay. Yeah, I was just wondering. Yeah. Okay. So um, yeah, I, I can just use some of the remaining time just to talk about um, some other monotones. And then make a, make a connection back to what I've already talked about. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I think um, you've seen in a previous um, talk the robustness of magic. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So just to recap, what um, this is the sort of cartoon picture. If you've got a um, a general density matrix that's sort of outside the set of stabilizer states, then the, the idea of robustness of magic is to kind of find the um, <clears throat> minimal decomposition in terms of the L1 norm that has this form. And the point is that if you have a decomposition like that, you can then um, um, you, you can do this, this quasi-probability sampling technique 
So if the robustness is the, the minimum over the L1 norm of these, these decompositions, if you take this decomposition and uh, sort of pull out this, um, this sort of scaling factor, what you're doing is you're sort of um, rewriting this decomposition, which is, um, so sorry, though, so the point is that some of these are going to be negative if you have a non-stabilizer state. Um, so if you, um, uh, this then becomes, um, looks, looks like a probability distribution. So the idea is that you sample from these objects that um, can have positive or negative sign, so they're proportional to stabilizer states, but they're positive negative sign and they can be over normalized. And then um, the fact that they're over normalized means that um, you increase the, the variance and then it turns out that you need um, sort of R, R squared samples to achieve some, some fixed precision. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so there was, um, you can extend this to channels as well. So this was what, what um, Earl and I did in a, in a sort of earlier paper, um, earlier than the, um, the one I was just talking about. That's what I mean. Sorry, the stabilizer rank one. So here you need, um, you need a notion of stabilizer channels. which um, we called completely stabilizer preserving channels. And these are, we also want these to be um, trace preserving CPTP maps so that you don't get um, uh, strange things happening with the normalization that screw up your variance. And <clears throat> completely stabilizer preserving channels is, um, are those where, given any um, stabilizer state, it takes you back to, to they, they preserve the stabilizer polytope, um, mm -hmm. even with the addition on of, of uh, tensoring with, with the identity, because you can get channels that sort of appear to be stabilizer preserving, but it turns out that they're, um, they're not if you, if you act on part of a larger system. And this has analogies with um, um, uh, entangling channels. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so um, there, sorry, uh, sorry, I just almost let the door, I just one second. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so um, this has a nice characterization in terms of um, in terms of uh, the choice state. So it turns out that um, a channel is in is completely stabilized, preserving if and only if it's um, its choice state. So um, this thing, where this is the max entangled state, so the bell state is is a stabilizer state. <clears throat> um, okay, so that was that's kind of robustness. Um, the um, in this pet, the same paper as the, um, the, the, the mixed state extent, um, we introduced a couple of other sort of variants of robustness, um, which 
or each of which relates to a, um, uh, a, a simulator. So one of these is to, um, so these are, these are all valid states, but you can also, because we're just dealing with classical simulation, um, we don't necessarily need we, we, we don't necessarily need these things to be physical. So you can instead replace them. You can sort of relax this definition so that each of these, um, this, this ket and this bra is a stabilizer state, but they can be different. So you have these non Hermitian objects and you can kind of um, make some modifications to the quasi probability sampling um, method so that this still goes through because you can still uh, you, you need to you now need to keep track of the phase as well but there are there are um, uh, uh, stabilizer simulators that, that can do that um, and um, the, the the point is that because this is um, your if, if you, we call this the, the sort of dyadic negativity and the point is that if you minimize um, <clears throat> over decompositions of this type. Um, so of this form, this, um, the, the original robustness of magic um, decompositions are, are a subset of this, this. So you can potentially get um, um, a smaller value for this. And again, it's the, the this monotone gives you the relates for here to the runtime of an algorithm. And in, in practice, it turns out to be um, significantly smaller. Um, so that's the dyadic negativity. Okay. And then there's, um, we also talked about generalized robustness. Here, the idea is that, um, um, well, if I write it in terms of, if you recall, maybe I'll go back to this picture. Um, so here I use this row plus and row minus, but here, what if we if we let this go out to here? Um, and so then you you have this um, So it's still kind of a quasi probability de decomposition, but the um, the, the idea with this is kind of that you, um, uh, I guess the sort of intuition is that because this this um, uh, this vector is sort of further in the um, in in the opposite direction, you kind of need less of this p, um, and the the algorithm for this is like um, uh, so this this is probably practical only in in, in quite restricted settings. But essentially what you do is uh, we call it the constrained path simulator. The idea is you just um, you just approximate essentially by by the, the positive path. And so here the um, the scaling is sort of is the, there's not um, a runtime scaling, it's like an, an error. So the error grows with the distance from uh, stabilizer states. So perhaps if you have a circuit that's like um, extremely close to being stabilized but not quite, this gives you a sort of um, a formal way to say what 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 the error is by by um, just using a essentially an adapted stabilizer simulator. And there's some quite nice work. Um, um, so in my in, so in my thesis, I, I did a little bit of. Um, uh, of work extending this idea to channels, but um, there's uh, there's some um, some quite nice work by um, I think um, uh, uh, Saxena and and Gore, 
where they've they've um, kind of um, come up with an interesting simulator. That's um, I think more practical than what I've suggested here, but it's essentially extending the generalized robustness to to channels. Um, and the idea is that I, I, I think, or if I understand right, the idea is that if you've got a circuit with um, many um, uh, many gates and sort of some are more stabilized than others, you can sort of interpolate between a um, a sort of <clears throat> um, channel simulator, a sort of quasi probability channel simulator of the usual kind, and a um, this kind of constrained path. So it's like you you sort of drop the negative terms in the places where you can afford to do so because it doesn't introduce much error, and the rest of the time you use the quasi probability simulator. Um, but um, um, I, I don't have I think I don't have the reference to hand, but I can I can send you the other because I think that's a nice okay. nice paper. Um, yeah, so I think that I can, maybe I'll just finish off. Um, um, the, the, so for, for all of these, there are extension, extensions to the channel picture. Um, I, um, I probably, I think I won't go into the detail because um, um, sort of coming to the end of the time, but um, I think a nice way to finish off is just to, is just to sort of, um, just to give some some sort of some of the simple results that are relating to these. So it turns out that pure states we have equality. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure I wrote it down, but th this is the generalized robustness that I just described. This is the dyadic negativity. This is the mixed state extent that I talked about earlier. And we know that this is equal to the pure state extent. So this kind of gives you a nice link between the quasi probability type methods and the, the, um, the kind of pure state methods um, that we, we sort of generalize to, to mixed states. Um, in the more general case, sorry, you have. Um, this relation. And um, you also have equality for um, single qubit states. And um, <clears throat> Yeah, I, I mentioned for the mixed state extent already, but it's also true for these others that um, you have, um, um, if you've got a, a, a tensor product of either pure states on up to three qubits, I believe, um, or single qubit states, is the one I, I sort of maybe talked about more, then, um, sorry. <laughs> then it's exactly multiplicative. <clears throat> so at least using with, with when you're using these types of algorithms that I've described, you know that when you have the, um, uh, you, you know you have the, de the optimal decomposition, decomposition for the single qubit case, um, it, then you sort of, it gets sort of for free gives you um, the optimal decomposition for, um, tensor um, sort of met many copies or, or tensor product of many single qubits. Um, yeah, so this wasn't the case, for example, with robustness of magic. So there it's like, um, you could, it turned out that you could do better if you say, um, <clears throat> you, you sort of block together um, groups of um, like tensor products of five qubits um, you can do better if you if you if you try and look for those um, decompositions directly rather than um, than uh, sort of decomposing the single qubit case and then adding those um, you know producting those decompositions together. You can do better if you block them together, but that becomes difficult because, um, <clears throat> um, as I mentioned, these linear these linear programs, the size of the problem grows um, super exponentially mm -hmm. because of the, the, the blow up in the number of stabilizer states. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but this multiplicativity property um, um, tells you you don't, for these monotones, you don't have to worry about that. Um, yeah, so I think maybe, maybe I'll, I'll stop there. Um, and I think I'll probably have to sign off in a moment, but if there's any questions, I can answer. Um, uh, thank you, David. So first of all, I just want to say thank you. So I will uh, clap for you uh, in lieu of everybody else. Uh, any any questions from anybody else? Um, yeah, so I guess uh, not to keep you too long, but I do have like question slash comment, something in between. So mm -hmm. Jihan, our interest in sort of looking at these uh, simulation methods is because uh, Jihan and his collaborators developed this lambda algorithm i don't know are you are you familiar with this at all i'm not super familiar i i remember seeing you talk I, I tried to have a skim through um i didn't have time for you to read to read in detail um, no no yeah. yeah so the basic idea is that you've got the stabilizer polytope for any number of qubits and then this lambda polytope is the dual of that so yeah. a set of all quantum states is inside of it mm -hmm. and so uh, you know, you can describe any density, uh, any quantum state as a convex mixture of these like vertices of this uh, dual polytope lambda. And so the question is kind of like, okay, how can you characterize the sort of like um, the complexity of this simulation? And so it's like, okay, well, there's no negativity because everything can be described in terms of just convex mixtures everything purely non-negative. So then it's like, okay, are there some other sort of uh, uh, sort of monotones or any sort of way, other way to characterize mm -hmm. the complexity of this simulation? So that, that's kind of at least the, um, at least the, the motivation. Um, probably since you didn't look at it, you don't have any thoughts on this, on this front, what would sort of be a, an interesting possible connection um, I think so. From from what I understand, it seems like so. Do, let me just see if I have it right. So that um, you you have like an a, a um, a, you can write you can write the state down as a, a sort of a probabilistic mixture over these um these phase point operators. Yeah. That that are the the. And sort of trace one and Hermitian, right? And yeah, exactly. Um, and there's like so, and there's an efficient update rule. So if you if you if you have Clifford gates or Pauli measurements, then you know how to efficiently update the. Um, uh, uh, I'm not sure that we know for sure that we yeah. know that that the updates of the phase point operators are okay. uh, efficient, actually. Okay. Yeah, so so I, I think there's there's like there's like a comment in in the paper, isn't it? Like some somewhere there's it seems like there's complexity hidden somewhere. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, that's kind of the thing is that yeah. presumably, I mean, there's some sort of you know complexity, or you know, quantum computation would be uh, sort of not more powerful. Uh, Gian, right? It's not the case. We know that, for example, there are certain, like there's a sub polytope of lambda consisting of certain kinds of phase point operators, these like CNC uh, ones. And then those, I think, are, uh, those are efficient. We know precisely how to update those, but the update rules for the others are not known. So we actually don't know, I guess, whether they're efficient or not, is kind of. Yeah. Yeah, I guess th there's like two separate, uh, I mean, maybe uh, at least two separate pieces <laughs> to it. The first is like, you have to actually enumerate these vertices. And then the second, and, and you also then need to know how these things perform under uh, poly measurements. So, yeah. Because uh, I, I remember the earlier paper and um, it, um, you had these CNC phase point operators and um, I remember there it's like you could have um if you take a fixed number of qubits um I think the difficulty there with trying to find the decompositions was that they they um uh, I, I th am I right thinking they don't they sort of don't compose necessarily so if you have if you know the decomposition for say a single qubit or um a few qubits 
if you then if you take many copies of that um the the, the phase point operators you, you sort of don't have the decomposition you have to somehow find the, yeah, right? there, there's there's not a nice sort of uh yeah. composition under tensor product i mean there are certain uh, like structural properties you can get vertices of the new one <laughs> by tensoring with like stabilizer states, but it's not, yeah, but it's not yeah. so easy to go uh, from yeah. one qubit to two qubits, et cetera. Right, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it seems like, yeah, so the, the, the um, one of the things that makes the, um, the kind of the, like the stabilizer rank type simulator um, work, um for if um like a particular case like you've got many copies of a t-state or something is that it, they the um the decompositions do do compose so if you have um um <clears throat> well, it gives you like an upper bound right because you know for sure that if you have chi terms yeah. of like a, a three t like you know t to the cube state you know yes. Yeah. You you know if you take two copies, so it's like yeah 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 you you know at least that it's at most this many terms, but you you don't really have such a guarantee, and you also know that for stabilizer rank, it's like sub uh, multiplicative either. I mean that's an upper bound. Yeah 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 that's right that's right. But for the extent, it's it's multiplicative, so it's 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 um you sort of you can't do any better you than than what you already sort of know from the. Single mm -hmm. case. Um, yeah, so I mean, yeah. maybe so, that, I mean, I would have to think about it. Maybe that on its own sort of indicates that this is not such an efficient, I mean, it's not even as, uh, it's not perhaps probably not going to be as efficient as some of these other methods because of this uh, structure where it doesn't compose nicely. It, like it might be the case that um you know so i mentioned like the, the with the mixed state extent um it's uh it could have been that we don't we that we didn't have a de we didn't weren't able to find the optimal decompositions mm -hmm. um because there's not a, an efficient um um there's not an efficient uh way as that i know of to 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 do that sort of programmatically mm -hmm. But it's, it's we were able to find analytic decompositions that we can show to be optimal. So it might be that you know you can take maybe you can take some um, specific states and you can maybe you can show that um, you, you know there there's like an analytic decomposition for that particular class of states um, mm -hmm. and maybe there's maybe there's something there I don't know. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, okay. I mean, I, I don't really have much more to contribute other than that. If does anyone else have questions? Okay. If not, I'm going to thank James again. Thank you, James. I really appreciate mm -hmm. it. Very nice. Very nice talk. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank for you, James. That was very thank nice. You. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Uh, I will. Uh, so